Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today is like a pregnancy update video with what seems to be like an airplane flying above. Ooh, it's just one of those days. Well, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And if you guys are new here, please go ahead and consider subscribing. I am going to be doing a lot of pregnancy and mom videos and just all the things mom and pregnancy related, which I'm so excited about because I'm currently six months pregnant. So technically I am 24 weeks and what to, I'll be 25 weeks on Saturday. Okay. It's Wednesday. So like 24 plus four, I think. Um, and honestly, uh, the doctors are considering me 23 weeks plus four, like they're considering me, um, a week behind. And this is from my very first scan that I did. The doctor told me that the baby was measuring at seven weeks instead of eight weeks. And I honestly think it's just because she's small. I don't think that I'm a week behind. I know almost exactly when I ovulated, I did ovulation predictor kits. So I'm just kind of sticking with my timeline, but the good thing is it gives me a little bit of extra time in case I go over. So I'm getting a really, really ahead of myself, but I am six months pregnant and I am so excited. This is my first baby and we already know what we're having. We're having a little girl. And if you missed the gender reveal video, please go ahead and watch that. Um, it was so fun to make and so fun to look back on. And I just love having all of these memories to look back on. So I just really wanted to kind of give you guys an update, tell you guys about how I've been feeling the last few months because it's been a while since I've done any type of real update. And I just told my family when I was about 16 weeks, I told everyone that I was pregnant. Um, there was a few reasons why we waited, but mainly I wanted to tell my family in person and my brother was getting married. So it was a perfect time to go home without them thinking anything. And when I went home, I still wasn't really showing that much. So I got to surprise everyone, which was so cool. If you guys missed that video, there is a video of me telling my friends, like two of my closest friends and my family. So highly recommend checking that out. It is very emotional, but so cute to watch. And yeah, so we told everyone around 16 weeks and then I stayed in the States until September 10th. And from September 10th to October 10th, it was like about a month that I was just like hanging out. I wasn't really doing much. I was feeling extremely like jet lagged the first week or two and then very lazy the week after, like the last two weeks after that. And then I had a friend, she came from the States to come visit. Um, just last week and she stayed for a week and now she's gone so I just figured it's the perfect time to go ahead and update you guys so a lot has happened in the last month um, I went for my first and my second scan and we got to see pictures of baby she is so cute I think she's gonna look just like her dad and that was so exciting everything went really really well the only thing that I have a little bit of an issue with, not even an issue, but the thing that was really hard for me was, you know, the doctors don't necessarily speak a lot of English, which I find kind of shocking. Like there's a lot of people that speak English in this country, but doctors specifically don't always speak English. And for whatever reason, a lot of them are old. A lot of them, you know, feel no need to, fine. And my fiance speaks Hebrew and I speak Hebrew, but medical terms are not really my forte. And this is obviously our first pregnancy. So it's a little bit hard for him to understand as well. So it's just been an adjustment. So I, from what I understand in the States, the um, scans, the anatomy scans. So we had, a, we had an early one and a late one. There's one that you do around 16 weeks. And then there's one that you do around between 21 to 24 weeks, something like that. And we had ours, um, our early one before I went to the States around 16 weeks, like 15 weeks actually. And then we had our late one around 20 weeks. So each of them were very quick. And from what I get in the States, 
most people say that they take a long time. Like they are checking every inch of the baby, making sure that the baby is okay, measuring everything. And honestly, my first one took maybe 10 minutes, max 15, but like maybe 10 minutes it took. And the second one was probably shorter than that. Like it was probably like seven minutes. And it just felt like, how could you be doing everything right if in the States, everything takes so much longer? And it's not like there's like this high tech stuff that shows you things better than it does in the States. Like it's all the same technology. So I don't really understand that part. That part was a little bit hard for me to grasp. Um, I, I left feeling a bit frustrated that you know, I felt very rushed out of the situation. You know how it's like a common joke amongst pregnant women that um, whenever you go into an appointment with the doctor, it's very much like you lay back. They're like, oh, baby's looking good. This and that, everything's good. Do you feel okay? Everything okay? Okay, see you next week or see you next appointment. And that usually takes just a few minutes. And that is also very, very quick here. Um, but I just wasn't expecting the scan to take, to, to be so quick. I just wasn't expecting that. So that was a huge adjustment. And yeah, so that was around 20 weeks. And then um, we had a lot of holidays as well. So that was an, a lot of the other reason why I didn't film as much this last month. Um, we had the new year, Rosh Hashanah in, in um, the Jewish religion that happened around the end like the middle of september and then we had yom kippur which was um the day of atonement this is like the day that you um ask for forgiveness um from everyone that you may have wronged and you don't eat that day i ate that day guys i was not fasting i don't normally fast i'm gonna be completely honest i fasted in the past it's not for me I do believe in fasting to an extent, but for this specific purpose, no, I don't fast. Um, but I, um, I didn't fast. I just hung out at home. It was a very chill day and yeah, I enjoyed myself. And then what else? We had another holiday just recently that just ended. We had Sukkot, which is the holiday, I, I don't necessarily know what exactly it means, but basically it's the holiday where you build a sukkah outside, which is like a little hut, um, and you eat every meal outside in that hut um, for a week straight. So it started um, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday prior when my friend came, and then it lasted for a week and that was um the end was sunday we had another holiday dinner that was like the last holiday before hanukkah and hanukkah is not really a super celebrated holiday in israel not that people don't celebrate it obviously people do they do light the candles they do say the prayer whatever but nobody gets off work it's not like the other holidays so in the states hanukkah is very um, closely compared to Christmas, but in Israel, um, the kids are off of school, but the people, the parents still work. So that has been kind of a rundown of my last month so far. And I have just been growing, growing, growing. The last time I went to the doctor, I had gained almost 30 pounds. I know guys, I'm like in shock at myself. That was like, almost a month ago no that was like two weeks ago that i went to the doctor or something like that yeah it was the beginning of october so um about two weeks ago that i went to the doctor and she was like oh you gained quite a bit of weight and i was like oh shoot like i was not expecting that um but i did eat a lot in the states like a lot so in a lot of unhealthy food like a lot of processed vegan junk food i was just indulging i really didn't care about being the picture of health for that 17 days that i was there 
I just wanted to enjoy myself and try all of the cool vegan junk food that I don't normally get access to. But the last week has been also a whole bunch of eating out with my friend, which was very good, a lot of indulging as well. But now that she's gone, I'm back to my home cooked meals, a lot of fruits, a lot of vegetables, um, a lot of protein. So I feel like I am kind of balancing everything and I also feel like I may be the person who gains a lot of weight at the beginning. I already gained by like the first 15 weeks, like the first trimester, I think I gained close to 10 pounds and that's a lot for the first trimester on average. So fine. Um, another update is that I... If you can't tell, my finger is a little bit red, this one, and a little bit swollen. So I had hurt my finger about three and a half weeks ago now, almost a month ago, I hurt my finger. My dog um, pulled on the leash and my finger got kind of caught in it and it immediately turned red and had a little bit of a blood blister on the cuticle. Long story short, um, 17 days passed, it wasn't healing. I went to the doctor and they said it was infected. So they, um, they instructed me to take antibiotics and I didn't really want to. So I did everything in my power to make it go away naturally. I used this um, pull out salve. I'm not really sure what it's called. Um, it kind of smells and looks like tar, like literally like tar from the street, like it's black. And it helped a little bit, but it didn't actually take it away. And then I, um, I had lost a crown in on my tooth and I didn't get it fixed yet. And that got infected, or at least I think it got infected because I had flossed very deep in there and thought that there was something in there, there wasn't. Long story short, that was hurting. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and take the antibiotics. I did a lot of research on them. I spoke with a lot of doctors and everyone assured me that it was safe, safe for me, safe for the baby. Um, and I just didn't want to take the chance of anything happening, you know, with an infection in my gums and an infection on my finger. I said, you know what, I'm just going to just not risk it. And I'm normally not the type of person to take pills. So that was very hard for me to come to that decision. Um, again, I spoke with doctors, I spoke with friends, I spoke with family, and it was just the general consensus was that if it wasn't going away after a certain point, which it didn't, then I needed to take the antibiotic. And currently I am taking the antibiotic. I am on day three and I am supposed to take at least five days up to seven. Um, they instructed seven. I'm going to see how I feel after five and go from there. Um, yeah, everything is still kind of the same. My finger still still feels the same. My gums still feel the same. So I'm not really sure. You know, I've never had any infection, um, like skin infection or anything like this before. In, in my gums, I've definitely had an infection in my mouth before, but um, this is really new for me. So I'm assuming that I can attribute this to being pregnant. I'm not 100% sure. I feel like your body acts so different when you're pregnant so that was definitely something that i've been dealing with and as you can see i i think you could see in my other videos i got my hair cut off my hair has been growing very fast it was like up to there it's already grown like a lot it's been like a month and it's grown a ton um i'm just excited to see how much my hair grows in the next few months um because I'm not cutting it anytime soon and I just love to like do a long do it like a nice big chop and then let it grow so back on track about pregnancy everything has been feeling really good except I have been getting pretty swollen from about 16 weeks when I went home I was very swollen on the airplane like I did not realize how bad it was the flight is very very long it was about 12 hours flight to Chicago and from Chicago it was like another two and a half hour flight um, and I was obviously walking around all day before that and you know in the airport and it was just a lot honestly it was just a lot my feet were very swollen I put my feet up everything was fine 
while I was at home, my feet only like swelled up about one or two times me being home. Um, so it wasn't super common then, but now it's pretty consistent that my feet will almost always swell up in some way. I am staying active. I take my dog for two to three walks a day. Um, and I'm walking a decent amount. Like I'm usually doing at least an hour walking, if not more. And I'm trying to put my feet up whenever I'm home. So this swelling has definitely been something that um, didn't come as, as, as much of a shock as, you know, maybe the infection did. Um, because my ankles and my knees are not the best. So I'm not super shocked that this extra weight that I'm putting on um, and the heat still, it's still quite hot here. So I'm not super shocked that um, it's affecting me. I'm actually, I need to like move my feet right now because if I sit in one spot for too long, it's definitely not the best for my, for my circulation. Um, so that's been quite interesting. And another thing is heartburn or acid reflux more specifically. I have had very intense acid reflux the last like week or so maybe, and maybe, maybe even two weeks. It started to get really bad really recently. And I have just been trying my hardest to limit my Tums intake because I am taking Tums. I honestly don't take anything like prior to pregnancy I don't take pills even like a Tylenol for a headache like I don't take anything but Tums I know aren't necessarily the best but they do have calcium in them and I'm not a hundred percent opposed to having a little bit of help when my chest and throat are on fire so I actually have really bad acid reflux before being pregnant and it was pretty much under control with my eating habits. After I became vegan, um, I've pretty much gotten it under control. You know, there was a few few times where, you know, I'd eat something spicy or, you know, just have the wrong combination of foods and it would kind of act up. But now it is very consistently every day. And I am just doing my best. Like I literally don't even have to eat anything and I will have acid reflux. And I am doing my best to kind of limit my Tums intake because I don't want to take more than one a day and I don't even want to take one every day. So currently right now I am suffering a little bit, but it's nothing your girl can handle. I am, you know, looking for an unmedicated birth. So if I can't handle a little acid reflux, then what the heck am I doing? Um, so yeah, I have an appointment with, I actually had an appointment. So that was another thing that um, happened. I had an appointment with a midwife and that was after I got back about a week or so after I got back. And that was a very stressful situation. Um, long story short, we did not vibe. Like the situation between her and I just didn't vibe from the beginning. I didn't like the way that she spoke to my dog. I didn't like the way that she acted very comfortable and unprofessional. And I just felt like it wasn't my vibe. Like I like someone who acts comfortable. I like someone who is very, you know, friendly and very outgoing. Um, but it just, it just wasn't the vibe. Like I just felt like, um, I just felt like we instantly didn't connect. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. You need to have somebody on your team that you connect with, somebody that is um, going to, you know, understand you and kind of be there for you in a way that, you know, no one else really can be during that time. Um, so it's just like finding a good partner in life. like. You just need to make sure that you guys really connect. And I kind of knew from the beginning that it just wasn't gonna work. And I felt like it was my only option. So I did try to make it work, which was kind of sad because I really went against my gut feeling and my initial reaction towards the situation. And I said, you know what, maybe I will give it a try. Um, we will see how things go and long story short, she also felt 
that things were not vibing properly and it wasn't just me. So, um, anyways, I am not going to go with her as a midwife, but I do have another appointment with another midwife at the end of the month. And I am so excited because immediately I feel like I connected with her. Like she does not speak English as a first language. She does not speak English at all. Let me rephrase that. Um, she said she understands a bit of English, but she prefers to speak only Hebrew. And for me, I think that that's going to be totally fine. I do feel comfortable enough in Hebrew and I also have Ofra with me. So I'm not super worried about that situation, but she, um, she just, the vibe immediately just felt right between her and I. She was so professional and so nice and she has incredible reviews and she is on Instagram and Facebook and I just love her post. And you know, that was another thing that the other girl was missing. She didn't really have any social media presence and you know, normally I wouldn't deem that as such a big deal, but it just felt like, you know, this other girl, she just felt like, you know, she had such a, such a presence online and so many people were raving about her that it just, it, it, it felt really good. It felt really right. So I'm going to meet with her on Halloween, which is literally in like 11 days, 12 days. And I am so excited. So that will happen shortly. And I think that everything is going to work out. I'm pretty, pretty confident that she will be my midwife. So unless something crazy happens, it's most likely going to be her and I will be having the home birth of my dreams, which I am so thankful for. I'm so thankful to the universe because this lady, I was not to, like, I was not able to find her. Okay. I told you that the previous midwife that I didn't vibe with, she felt like she was my only option because I had tried many different midwives. No one was willing to come to my home except her. And there was one other group of midwives and they were like double the price. And I just didn't like their model. I didn't like how they worked and it just wasn't for me. So I decided against them. And I said, this girl is the only option. I'm going to have to go with her. Long story short, um, I spoke with a friend the day that I just that that we decided it wasn't going to work me and the other midwife and my friend was here and I said yeah I'm so upset I don't know if I'll be able to do a home birth because I don't have a midwife that will be able to support me and this and that and you can do an unassisted home birth here I just don't feel comfortable doing that I want to make sure that I have somebody a medical professional on my team since this is my first birth um, so that was something that was very important for me and she actually connected me with a friend who was a midwife in Canada and a doula. And I was so excited. I called her right away and she first told me she is not a certified midwife in Israel, which is okay. Um, I'm willing to go with an uncertified midwife. The issue would be that I wouldn't get reimbursed for a certain amount of money, but long story short, she knows what she's doing. Um, but it wouldn't technically be like, like legal, I guess, because she's not certified. Um, but she recommended me to her friend who is this lady that I'm going to see on Halloween. So I am so excited because I, I feel like I wasn't supposed to find her. There is a website. Well, I feel like I was supposed to find her, but I wasn't supposed to find her the, the normal way, if that makes sense, because there's a website that shows a list of all of the practicing midwives that do home births in Israel. And it's about 16, 15 people. It's not that many people. And I had contacted so many people online and they all said no. And they all kind of recommended me to other people. And you know, this girl that I spoke with, who, who my friend got me in contact with, she said, yeah, she's not on the website. Like she's just the midwife who decided not to be on the website. And that for me was like, whoa. Like, did I really just find another midwife in Israel? Because Israel is small and I was sure that my options were exhausted. So I'm so excited about that. I know that that was meant to be. So I cannot wait to see her on Friday, on Friday, on Halloween. And I will update you guys. And yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I still have incredible heartburn, acid reflux right now. It is like 
so, so bad. I'm definitely, definitely getting bigger. I am pretty sure you can say that I've popped by now. Um, I will definitely show you my bump in a second. Um, and I'm still just trying to figure out, you know, in terms of my um, parents, when they're going to be coming, that's another thing to think about. I really would love if my parents could be there. Um, maybe not necessarily when I give birth because it's going to be too difficult to kind of time that. But I do think that it would be really cool if they're there shortly after to kind of help and things like that. But again, it's very hard to time and you do need to kind of book a flight in advance. So there's a lot of things to consider. But I'm so excited. I don't really have many other symptoms, I guess you can say, besides swelling and acid reflux or heartburn. Um, is there anything else that I'm not thinking of? No. I did have, at the beginning, pretty sore breast, but they are pretty fine now unless like I'm laying down for a really long time sometimes when I get up at, like when I'm like after sleeping um it will feel like kind of like a big weight on my chest because they definitely got bigger but other than that those are doing good and um I got my breast pump in the mail which I'm so excited about guys I cannot wait I'm just Crossing my fingers that this breastfeeding journey will be good. Speaking of breastfeeding, I spoke with a really nice girl, that girl, lady, woman, um, who has a four or five month old and she's willing to donate breast milk for me, which is incredible. She also actually had a breast reduction. So without giving too much of her story away, she told me that she had a very successful um, time feeding her three kids, exclusively breastfeeding her three kids. So she told me, you know, you may be pleasantly surprised. And I am so, so excited. Like, I know that that was all meant to work out and that was very, very uplifting. And it was so nice to speak to her. So I'm very, very grateful for her. And yeah, I think that's, I think that's everything. I mean, I don't think that there is that much going on other than that. I do have, um, no, no, I don't have anything. I was gonna say I do have like things that I need to organize and get ready, but like that's obvious. I have a friend who is going to be giving me a lot of baby stuff. She has a, like a seven month old daughter. So um, she's gonna be giving me all the stuff that she doesn't use, which is incredible. I'm so excited for that. And we've just been doing a little bit of organizing and a little bit of purchases here or there just to kind of um, get everything little by little. And yeah, we are so, so excited. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, I am also feeling her kick right now. Not like right now, but like now. Um, I wasn't feeling her kick for quite some time. I think it was like 21 or 22 weeks whenever I started to actually feel her. And I was like a little bit nervous, like, you know, am I going to feel her? Because they said that I have um, an anterior placenta. So I have like this kind of like barrier between the placenta and my stomach. So I don't feel her very strongly, but I do feel her. And I know like she is kicking around in there. She's doing flips, she's doing the whole thing. Um, and things are starting to get a little bit tighter in there. So yeah i'm very very excited this is such a cool journey and i am so excited to take you guys along with me i'm going to be doing some more bump dates i'm probably going to like maybe start doing a weekly one just to kind of keep everything a little bit shorter because i know this is a longer video but i just wanted to thank you guys so so much for watching i really appreciate it and if you made it to the end i would really appreciate you guys subscribing like 90 percent of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed and that would mean the world to me if you did subscribe you have no idea like literally every single subscriber i celebrate so i would really appreciate it and um yeah with all of that said thank you guys so much for watching if you guys have any comments or requests for any future videos please let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. So a little bump date for you guys. From the front, baby girl's getting big. 
from the side. She is also getting big. I just love this cute little bump. Let me show you from this side. I feel like she looks kind of small from this side. Some might say she looks very big, but I think she looks small-ish. <laughs> and I still don't think it looks like I gained 30 pounds, but I basically gained 30 pounds. Maybe I lost a little bit of weight recently because I've been doing a lot of exercising and things like that, but She's definitely not moving around right now. She is sleeping and I feel her most in the morning and in the evening. Oh, and I just, I love this. This is like so, so fun. And yeah, thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.